Hi, I'm Callum and t from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you the Bailey Autograph 740 handover. Once you arrive at site, you'll be wanting to hook the vehicle up. So if you grab your hook-up lead, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van and slide on until you hear this positive click. And then to unhook, there's a small blue lever, so if you push that down and pull the lead off. Always suit the van on first, then the site as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead. Should it be wet or should the lead be damaged in any way, we wouldn't want you get an electric shock. And then here is how to fill your fresh water. So you've got two options. So if you're wild camping and you couldn't get the van near hook up, um, near water, sorry, you get your wheel submersible pump, which has got the block end on here. So these two metal bits are your contacts for your 12 volt. So you put that onto there and then you drop the submersible into your aqua roll and then if you go to the control panel which I'll show you on the inside there's an internal tank fill if you press enter what that does is it sends 12 volt of this pump and it will suck the water in from the aqua roll into the main fresh water holding tank but if you were going to a site where you can stop off at, uh, for water or you might want to get water from home got a hose pipe here so this clips onto your, your brass tap and then this quad lock again but this just locks into there and then clips onto the hose pipe like so and that would be how you would fill from a normal tap this is your gas locker so LPG liquid petroleum gas open with the key and then on board you can fit two six kilogram propane gas bottles so what you do is you tie them in and just stand them into the, into the, into the stand there and tie them in and then you will need to buy a gas spanner or an adjustable spanner the left hand thread and then nip up with the spanner and then when you do turn it on at the top of the bottle press this green button for three seconds and it allows the gas out of the bottle through the crash valve and into the van it's best to do just to turn it on one full turn at the top of the bottle but should you have an emergency and want to isolate your gas it's just one turn off instead of several but you can fit two gas bottles in there so you can have one and a spare and here, this is your Vision Plus external aerial point. So if you go and buy yourself a lens of coax, you clip in there. So should you go to a super site where they've got an aerial there, you clip in here with your coax and clip, clip the other end into your post. And that'll give you TV aerial from their aerial and not their aerial on the van should you be in a, a, a place where it's hard to find a signal. And then coming down behind the driver's rear wheel, you've got your waste water tap. So normally on the way out of a site, you'll want to drain your waste water. So you drive over a grid, should it be a camping and caravan in sight, um, or a small um, gully or hole in the ground, should it be a small SEL site. And you would just turn your tap, and it'll drain your waste water, which is your shower and water, your dishes water, and your hand basin water. And obviously in the winter, you don't want to leave any water on board. So you'd want this completely empty and your fresh completely empty, which you empty from inside, which I'll show you once on board. So this is your toilet system. So you've got your flush in here. So it's just exactly like a caravan. So instead of taking the feed from the main freshwater tank, it's a separate reservoir for the flush, flush water. So you put your hose pipe into there and fill it. You can add pink, um, which is like a chemical, and then top it up. 
but some people use a watering can diluted and then pour it in so it might be something you want to carry or you can just put a hose pipe and fill it with water with a bit of pink in and all the pink does is it gives it a nice scent so that is your flush water so when you press the flush on the top of the toilet this is where the water comes from in the separate reservoir which is lockable and then below so your toilet's in there this is where all your business ends up so you can lock this so as long as the slide on the bottom of the toilet closes you can lift and pull it to set out and then you do have a you can drag it along once it's full instead of carrying it so you've got some wheels on there and then they're empty take the cap off press the button at the back it allow it stops the glugging and it gives a consistent flow and tip out like so once you have tipped it out if you put some water in it and give it a rinse and tip out again and if you want to gain access you can gain access in here and turn that to get into the cassette to clean and this will actually open up by using turning this upside down and open it up to give it a proper clean and um, before the season starts or at the end of the season and then once you have emptied it and you've cleaned it out if you are using the chemical a cap full of chemical into here into the cassette but if you are using the tablets put a pint of water in push it back into the vehicle and drop the tablet straight down the toilet they are just like dishwasher tablets in the cellophane and that will degrade the chemical and allow you to use the toilet and break down your waste now at the back of the vehicle you've got your twin lens reverse camera your high level brake light your bike rack use your bike rack you've got two reels here so your first bike would go in there you put these through your spokes and clip your wheels down onto the rails and then put this through your crossbar and then the same, your second bike would go here and this would go through your crossbars. And then you've got your ladder and to loosen your ladder off, you take this cap, the strap off, pull it down and then you have access onto the roof. Coming around in the, and obviously on the back, you do have your tow bar with seven pin electrics and your rear bumper bar. Coming around the driver, the passenger side, and you've also got all your fluids. So you've got your brake fluid, radiator fluid. So if you lift this cover off, you can fill your radiator fluid and the one next to it, which is your power steering fluid. But the main one you're going to need when using the van is your screen wash when you're touring in the summer. And then you do have your oil filler and dipsticks for checking your levels before you go. You've got your sounder for your alarm system and your bonnet switch. So if your bonnet was to be um, open or try it to be forced open and the alarm set will set the alarm off. You've got your earth for your black jump lead or charger and your positive goes in here. So if you put your key or your screwdriver in here, lift this cover up, your red crocodile clip for your jump start, giving or receiving or charger, we're going to here for jump starting. Once inside the vehicle, this is your main 12 volt control panel. So you've got your master switch, which is it'll turn on and off the vehicle. This will either give 12 volt if you aren't hooked up and you'll be solely running off your leisure battery, or if you are hooked up, you'll get 240 volt. Next week, you've got your pump. So you must turn your pump on to surface your toilet, your kitchen tap, your hand basin tap and your shower otherwise you'll just go get whatever's left in the pipe until it drains out and then it'll stop bringing any water through so put the pump on but only put the pump on if you've got sufficient water underneath you've got your master switch for all your lights and then they are all individually switched around the vehicle and your awning is your awning light above the door so if you do go off for the evening and you're coming back later on put your awning light on it's the easiest way to find your vehicle or if you're sitting out underneath the awning on an evening and then if you've got you can scroll through so you've got your water levels there it's 41% fresh water 
0% waste. Your tank fill, so if you're filling from a bucket or an aqua roll like I've showed you outside with the one of the two ways you can fill, so if you're filling with a submersible pump, so to make the sub give the submersible pump 12 volt, you must press enter and then it'll say tank filling and this will bring, this will go up when it's sucking the water into the van and to turn off just press enter again and then you've got your in external temperature and you've got your settings which is explained in your handbook your internal temperature and then your vehicle battery select so your battery select is always on leisure you don't want it on vehicle as this will drain your Peugeot engine battery and then the current amps coming off the leisure battery and then the voltage going into the leisure battery which is which is currently at 14.3 volts you're reading of your leisure battery and then you've and then you put your time, which you can change in the settings. And next to it, you've got your Aldi. So once you've pressed this button and it's turned on, you'll get this screen here. And then if you press menu, so at the top, you've got your temperature of the motorhome. So you've got all the way to 30 degrees or all the way down off. And below, you've got the picture of a tap. This is the temperature of your water. So you've got off. So if you've got no water on board, don't try and heat your water. You've got off there, you've got 40 degrees or if you've got the full bar on you've got 60 degrees of heating your water and then below this is your source you're running off so you've got electric which is off and um, you've got one kilowatt of electric two kilowatts of electric or three kilowatts of electric for heating your water and the van or if you weren't hooked up at all you might you in what's called wild camping you would be using the gas so the gas flame there and it's self ignites on gas or if you were in a rush for water or you were away in the winter and you wanted to heat the van far quicker if you put the gas and put on two kilowatts of electric together this will double your heating time and probably give you heating and hot water within about 20 minutes and then once you've got sufficient heat you can turn the gas off and allow the electric to carry it you can go into settings and program timers and things but i'll not over complicate it for you keep it as that and then there is videos once you are um, knowledgeable about this to go further with the timers but this is all explained in your handbooks to operate your Dometic fridge freezer you've got off here so this is the energy select you've got off at the top you've got mains electric which is 240 volts it only works when you are hooked up and then below you've got 12 volt which will only work when the engine's running so this is like a keep cool setting so the idea here is to hook the vehicle up the day before you go away put your shopping in allow it to get nice and cool overnight and then when you do start traveling if you just put that onto the battery setting and then as soon as you start the engine the alternator i'll send the 12 volt feed to the fridge and keep the fridge at the same temperature it was when departing so it'll not increase and it'll not decrease but it'll just keep it at a steady temperature to keep your shopping uh, fresh whilst you travel so it doesn't matter if you travel half an hour or you travel a fair distance your shopping should be nice and fresh but then if you were wild camping and you didn't have electric you'd turn down to the gas and then you'd push in your this is your temperature so you'd push in your temperature knob and your spark igniter and you'll see this go into the green once it's in the green you can let go and that is lit on gas but in the winter part of your winterizing procedure you'll want to clean the fridge out once you've cleaned it out with an anti-back you'll want to either put a fridge air freshener in just to keep the fridge nice and fresh but you don't want to close the door because if you've cleaned it and then you close the door you're trapping the air in so you want to keep the door open and to do so if you just push this and pull this tab out on the side of the light there this will stop the door from shutting fully and allow and will allow air circulation in and out the fridge to stop any um, mold or bacteria growing in the fridge. Now in your kitchen, so this is your fed fed um, oven, grill and hob. So to operate your hob you've got an electric hot plate here at the back which only works when you're on mains 240 electric which will indicate when it goes red that it's on. So make sure you don't knock that and then hook it up because it, it can damage the glass should you not be unaware. You've got your three gas rings so once you've had the hob on allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down because if, if it's too hot it can shatter the glass and then below you've got your grill 
Take your oven shelf and grill pan out when traveling or wrap them up because this is where you can get most of the rattles from. And then underneath, you've got your oven. If you haven't had the gas, if the vehicle's been standing for a long time and your heating is failing on gas or your fridge is failing to light on gas, the best way is to bring it to the hob first because this is the highest point of gas in the van. Once you've got this lit, it should make it a lot easier to light the Aldi heating system and your fridge. And then below, you do have your gas taps. So these are mainly for when the vehicle is serviced. Um, a technician will test each gas appliance to make sure it's um, reading accordingly to the guidelines set. But you can't isolate each appliance there if you want to. But if you've got any problems, of on gas isolate at the top of the bottle is far safer and then you've got your storage you've got two three pin plugs when hooked up and you've got your light switch here so it's just a small rocker switch and then you've got your storage up there so underneath your french bed is where your aldi boiler lives and this is this boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time. Part of your winterization process is to drain this boiler of all the water as you don't want the water to freeze in the boiler. As this can be very expensive to, to repair or replace and isn't covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to winterize the vehicle. So to winterize the vehicle, there is a small yellow toggle here which is known as your drain tap. So come in with no power on up like so and it will drain all the hot water directly underneath the chassis leave it up through the whole of the winterizing procedure so leave it up from whenever you do it to whenever you start using the van again and this should drain all the water out and stop any water from freezing in the boiler and then when you do come to reuse the, the van put it down so it's lying flat like it is now fill the van up with water Come in, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatically cold water, go to the hot side, it'll cough, it'll split, it'll make all sorts of noises. And what that's doing is it's bringing all the air from up into this boiler, out your taps, until you get all the water. So the 10 litres replenishes itself in the boiler, and then you'll get a good flow on one tap on hot, so go to the shower and go to the hand basin tap, and then it, your system is primed for the season. This is also where your freestanding table lives, so it lives underneath the bed and to put up, it's just like an ironing board so you just lift the legs and you can stand it either at the front lounge or should it be a nice day you might want to stand it outside. In your wardrobe area you do have your TV aerial which you can loosen the nut off and push up but always when travelling make sure it is pulled down and fastened securely so the wind doesn't um, blow the aerial about on the roof then you've got a toggle here to move the aerial to get a better signal but the best tip is to look where the other caravans and motorhomes are pointing on your site and on the vision plus booster you do have a min and a max so should you be getting too strong of a signal you can turn it down or should you not be getting a good enough signal you can turn it off but also you've got your Aldi expansion tank so here and um, you can top up from the top with Aldi um, antifreeze fluid but when it's off it'll always read lower so if it's close to minimum and you think oh I'm gonna to top it up always run it up first because when you run it up it'll get it'll show you how high the level gets before you need to top it up as if you top it up when it's at min you might get you might be filling it over than over the maximum level now in your bathroom, so this is your Fedford toilet, so if the pump's on you can press and hold the blue button and it'll flush the toilet and then you've got what's called a slide or a trap door, it can be called one or two things on the front of the toilet, so if you slide that to the right, you'll open the trap door and deposit your waste into the cassette, so if this is open and you try to get the cassette out now with the trap door open it won't get, you won't be able to pull the cassette out the side of the vehicle has to be shut to get the to get the cassette out the exterior of the vehicle and then on the top you have a cassette diagram when the wheel goes red it means that the cassette is ready to be taken out cleaned and replenished with chemical you do have toiletries cupboard there and some more underneath your sink 
you've got your windows so to operate all your windows on this fan you just push out and tighten these black knobs to keep the window out and obviously loosen to bring it back in make sure all your skylights and windows are closed when traveling and then you do have a black or blind for an evening or fly screen should you be away in the summer in scotland and the, the mozzies are about and obviously this is your cord for your lights and then also what i would say when winterizing you take the this off the mixer tap and allow this to lie in the shower tray because you don't want any water getting caught in the u-bend when the shower heads up like that and freezing because it'll break the corded shower hose and then operate this skylight you just push both or you push one down depending on what side the wind's blowing and open the skylights on the van so you've got three of these you've got one in the bedroom area one in the kitchen and one over the lounge if you just push the button in pull the lever you can put it in the groove should it be a nice day and you want a consistent breeze or you can open it all the way but make sure it is shut the bar is above the button when traveling and then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen on board. underneath your floor and the lounge just beside the kitchen so underneath here is where your leisure batteries live so you've got one leisure battery in there which is 105 amp but you have got space for an, an additional one should you require now in your lounge so this is how to make your bed so if you lift up and slide the lat system out so you've got one this side you slide that out and you can slide this out as well slide that into the middle slide this out and then you would use the backrests into the middle but with it being le leather I would advise that you turn all the cushions including the base cushions upside down and then you can put a you get a flatter surface to sleep on and you can put a fitted sheet on and your duvets and it's far more comfier to sleep on the backs of the cushions than it is the leather side so also underneath the bench seat behind the driver's seat is your what's known as your electric consumer unit so you've got all your trips on mains electric for your charger hot water sockets and fridge and your main fuse tester there and then below you have your various 12 volt fuses which run off the leisure battery so it would be a good idea to go and buy some spare blade fuses which are they're just standard blade fuses so you can get these from any car part specialist halfheads euro car parts and just carry them with you so if anything does blow a fuse you can just pick the fuse out and put a new one in and solve your problem also in the overhead locker behind the driver's seat you have your solar panel um con um, charge controller regulator so it's charging two batteries here so it's charging your engine battery and your green so when the greens flashing it means that the batteries are full when it's a steady green it means that their batteries are normal when it's a yellow steady it means that the batteries are low and when it's red steady it means that they're nearly empty and may require you to hook the vehicle up but now it's saying that they are full as the vehicle has had sufficient charge. To operate your captain seats and turn them round, you've got two levers on either side, so if you just pull, if it does get caught on the door, you'll be able to pull it forward and then turn your seat into the um, lounge and give you additional seating space in your lounge area. So to the right of the driver in your cab, you've got your handbrake, which is down here. You've got your electric mirrors, driver and passenger, and then your electric mirror adjustments. So this is just a joystick, so you can choose which mirror. Obviously, the top two are your big mirrors, and the bottom two are your blind spot on both passenger and driver. You've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fogs. You've got your wipers, and on the end of the wiper stalk, you do have your trip computer. So this will show you your range, your instant consumption, your average consumption, your traveling times, your distance you've traveled and so on. You've got your hands free so you can answer and decline phone calls You can scroll through your contacts or your radio channels. You've got your volume and you've got your mute. You've got your lights and your indicators this side. So the lights are manual so you just turn them on and then below you do have your cruise control. You've got a six speed manual gearbox so if you just, if you just lift the collar 
and put into reverse but this is always on even going forward so this is your rear view camera and then coming down here you've got your hazard lights this locks all three doors so your cab and your habitation door but you will have to manually lock your locker doors so yeah underneath your bed your toilet your gas locker and so on you've got your heated mirror switch there you've got two 12 volt and then this is your lockable glove box but also in here up here you do have your USB and auxiliary inputs for the head unit FM radio and AM so you can press 1 to 6 to save media will doesn't take a CD but it does take a USB or auxiliary so should you have all your songs on a memory stick or an iPhone or an iPod you can plug in there or of course you can stream from your device over Bluetooth but it's connect your phone if you press phone connect the phone press enter add a phone it'll say you may have to start the engine so, so If you now go, so to pair your phone, if you connect to my car, make sure the pins match, press pair and then it will ask you if you would like to download your phone book, press yes, so then whoever rings it will come up on the head unit. And then you've got your menu which you can change your sound system settings, Bluetooth and phones and sort your order of your contacts. You've also got on both sides, so you've got your concertina blinds which you'll just slide down and then you do have your main blinds so these just these are just magnetic and clipped together like so so they are just magnetic so you just have to get make them get a magnet like so but you may want a bubble or an elastic band round here should it be a windy night um, to stop them from pinging open just you will have to um, play with that reversing camera wire to get your blinds shut